Well, hello, Vaughn Forrest. Welcome to our online worship gathering. So glad you're joining us today. Hey, if you're new, if you're checking things out, my name's Adam. I'm the pastor here, and I want to welcome you. Glad you're joining us today. I know that worshiping online can be maybe a little different than uh, worshiping, worshiping together in person. So uh, let me challenge you maybe to block out all of the distractions around you. And uh, for this next hour or so that we're going to be together to focus your heart, to focus your mind upon God and to seek him because I believe he has something that he wants to say to you today. But before we do that, would you join me as we pray together? And so God, that is our prayer that for the next hour together, it wouldn't just be something that we just kind of do because We've been told that's what we're supposed to do during this season, but God, literally for the next hour, it would be a real encounter with you. God, we thank you that you are present here with us. God, we thank you that you want to speak to your people, and God, we are here today to worship you. So we thank you for that opportunity, and we pray all of these things in Jesus' name, amen. Wherever we are this morning, in our homes, in our apartments, let's stand and let's sing to the King who's not shaken by any of this. Let's sing to Him.
That's right, Jesus is victorious. He has not been caught by surprise and he is on his throne. The hope we have is in our risen King. Let's sing this together. Now the darkness fades. And now the darkness fades. And the new beginnings. As we lift our eyes to a hope beyond. Our creation waits. With an expectation to declare the reign of the Lord our God. together we will not be moved and we will not be moved when the earth gives way for the risen one is overcome yes he has and for every fear there's an empty grave for the risen one is overcome Lord, when we don't know what to do, God, we put our eyes on you. And we trust in you, Lord. You are here, you're working in the 
working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. God, we thank you that even when we can't see you working, we know that you are. God, we thank you that when we can't see a way, you make a way. God, we thank you that in the midst of the storm, we can still trust you. God, thank you for allowing us to be with you here in your presence today. And we pray all of these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As I said last uh, week. I'm so grateful for our worship team being here to lead us in these online worship gatherings. And I'm grateful for you for joining us as we are continuing in our hashtag Discipline for Godliness teaching series. Now, if you're just jumping in, we've been in this series now for four weeks, and the title of today's message is Social Distancing Together. We're going to talk about what that means in the message today. But this phrase, uh, social distancing, up until about Uh, 10 days ago, I I was unfamiliar with this phrase, and yet now it seems like that this phrase describes our new norm. Maybe you've even heard someone say that over the last several days, that we are experiencing a new norm. And and that statement, while I understand the sentiment, is really only about half true. See, there's a second part of the statement. We are experiencing a new norm for a season, See, all of this that we're in right now is a reminder that our life is lived in seasons, and some seasons, we can see them coming. We can plan for them. We can prepare for them, and then there are other seasons that are literally just sprung upon us without any warning at all, and this is certainly one of those seasons that we are in, and yet, in the midst of that, here's what we can be reminded of. Our God is the same in every season that our God is faithful, that our God is sovereign, that our God is in control, that this season did not catch God off guard. And so we rest in that. But as we are continuing to maintain social distancing because we love our neighbors and we want to do everything we can to stop the spread of this virus, and I know many of you have been doing that all week, and that is something that is really showing love for your neighbors, and so thank you for that. And, And we wanna continue to do that as a church as well. So let me give you a few updates concerning what that means. This is kind of our second Sunday that we've been doing this online worship gathering, and we're gonna continue this for the next two Sundays as well. So next Sunday, March 29th, the following Sunday, 
April 5th, we will be offering only an online worship gathering experience at 9.30 and 11 a.m. So we will not be meeting physically under one roof at our campus. But as I said last week, just because we don't meet physically together in one room does not mean the church is not being the church. We're continuing to be on mission, the mission that we believe Jesus has called Vaughn Forest to. But for the next two Sundays, we'll just keep meeting online. So our facility, our campus will stay closed over the next two weeks, our ministry staff, we're still working, we're communicating with each other daily. We are still available for any of you. If you need anything, you email, you call, you let us know. We're here to serve you during all of this. We just won't physically be up here at the building. What that also means is the Easter party that we had scheduled for Saturday, April 4th, uh, we won't be having that either. So just to kind of review, next two Sundays, online only, uh, 9.30 and 11. Three weeks from today, Sunday, April 12th, is Easter. Now, we haven't made a decision yet on Easter. We're gonna continue to pray. We're gonna continue to monitor and listen to those who kind of guide us through seasons like this. And uh, we will be letting you know when a decision is made. But we know what we're doing for the next two weeks, and uh, we'll keep moving forward with that. Now, I am starting something new tomorrow that I'm really excited about. Starting tomorrow morning, Monday, at 10 a.m., I'm gonna be uh, broadcasting a live devotion from my home. Now, I gotta warn you in advance. I have three boys. They're very active. I'll do my best to keep them out of the camera shot, but one of them may pop in from time to time. But I'm gonna be broadcasting a live devotion every morning at 10 o'clock. Clock, Monday through Friday, and that starts tomorrow, and I'm going to keep doing that as long as we're in this season of social distancing. So I'm really excited about that, and I hope you'll be able to join me um, every morning at 10 o'clock. Now, if you can't join us for some reason at 10 o'clock, uh, we are going to record those devotions, and then we'll post them to our Vaughn Forest YouTube channel. So if you haven't already subscribed to our Vaughn Forest YouTube channel, uh, that might be something that you want to do. And then we will also email that link out. So maybe you can't join us on Facebook for the live stream at 10 a.m. Uh, maybe you don't wanna track down the YouTube page. We will email it to you. It will be in your email inbox every day. And so you too can uh, participate along with this devotion. So I'm just gonna be going through a book of the Bible one day at a time. I'm really excited to get that kicked off again tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. Finally, our children's ministry team, led by Jamie Mooney, they've done an awesome job of sending out a lot of resources to families in our church, communicating with families in our church. If you haven't been receiving those emails and you have kids, maybe check your spam folder. That, that could possibly uh, be what happened. But if you're not on the email list for whatever reason and you'd like to get those resources, just email one of us and let us know. And uh, we'll be happy to add you to that list because, as I said, we've been sending out our family ministry team a lot of helpful resources uh, for families as we're kind of navigating this new season at home with our kids every day. Now, you might be asking, what about life groups? Well, that's actually what we're gonna spend the majority of our time talking about in the message today, because as I mentioned, we're talking about this idea of social distancing together. This idea of being together, this idea that's referred to sometimes as fellowship, what I would say biblical community. Uh, there's a number of passages in the New Testament called one another passages, that part of our faith is that we don't do it alone. There's no such thing as a loner Christian, that we're actually in community with one another. And this is actually one of the habits, one of the spiritual disciplines that we were going to unpack in this series anyway. Again, if you've missed any of the messages, kind of the idea we're going for is that there are classic spiritual habits, practices, disciplines, that as we put them into practice, they grow godliness in our lives. They help us grow in our relationship with God. They, they produce more godliness that others can experience. And one of the habits, practices, disciplines is this idea of fellowship. And the way that we experience fellowship most here at Vaughn Forest Church is through our life groups. Life groups are where we experience biblical community. Life groups are where we do life together. And so what I wanna talk about today is this idea of how we do fellowship kind of in this new season and how do all of our life groups fit into that. But to kind of get us started, I wanna take you back, all the way back to week one of this teaching series. I gave three big ideas that were kind of foundational for what we we're going to talk about. And I wanna share 
one with you. So it's gonna pop up at the bottom of the screen. And I know you don't have notes kind of in front of you to, to just fill in a word or two. So we're gonna leave these statements up a little longer uh, than usual. So you can write them now. So I would encourage you, like maybe right now, go find some paper, uh, grab a pen, pencil, lipstick, mascara. If you don't have any paper nearby, grab your kid's forehead. Whatever you need to write on, you might wanna jot some of these things down and then maybe come back to them over and over throughout the week. But here's one of the big ideas I shared way back in week one. It's kind of long, so hang with me for a second. In regular rhythms of life, I can connect with God in a way that both strengthens my relationship with him and produces what others experience as godliness. Now, if you missed the context of that, you're like, what on earth? That's such a long statement. I know. It was the idea that this is how we were going to define discipline for this series. Then when it comes to prayer, fasting, solitude, reading the Bible, fellowship. These aren't things that we like tack on to other things. It's not like one more thing we have to do. The idea is that we incorporate those into our regular rhythms of life. And those of you who attended way back when week one may have remembered, I said, sometimes we go through irregular rhythms of life. Now, I could have had no way of knowing that in several weeks, we would all be in this crazy, new, irregular rhythm of life. But just because we find ourselves in an irregular rhythm of life, a new season, like I said earlier, a new norm for a new season, it doesn't mean that we still don't have the opportunities to be together. And we're gonna talk about that today. But before we go any further, I think it's really important for me to share a principle with you that if you, if you haven't heard this principle yet in the season, I think it can be really powerful and freeing at the same time. See, here's the principle. When regular rhythms are interrupted, anxiety is what's produced. You, you gotta hear me say this. When regular rhythms get interrupted in our lives, anxiety is always what is produced. So listen, if you have been experiencing new levels of anxiety and worry, I want you to take a deep breath. You're not the problem. If you've been experiencing new levels of anxiety and worry, it doesn't mean that you're not spiritual. It doesn't mean that you don't trust God. It doesn't mean that you don't have enough faith. It doesn't mean that you're not spending enough time in prayer. See, anytime a regular rhythm is interrupted, anxiety is produced. Here's why. God created us in a way where as quickly as possible, we take everyday ordinary things in our life and we move them into some type of system, routine, or rhythm. And literally, when those get thrown off, like the chemicals in our brain react differently. This is why, like, when you start a new job, that, that's a new rhythm and more stress and anxiety is produced. If you move to a new place, we moved here six months ago. When, when you move somewhere, like, we take it for granted that you just drive to work, or you drive to the store, you, you, know, you know where to go, drive to the school. When you're new to a community, all of those daily trips create stress and anxiety because all of them are new for the first time. Anytime a regular rhythm is interrupted, anxiety is produced. I mean, I don't even have to mention having a baby, right? I mean, regular rhythm interrupted. You bring a new child home, anxiety is produced. So in this new season that none of us have ever walked through before, what's going to be produced is anxiety. Now, here's the interesting thing about anxiety. Anxiety can either be something that creates a barrier between us and God. Anxiety can be something that we then use as a reason to no longer trust God, or anxiety could actually be the way that strengthens our relationship with God. Look at what Peter says. I love Peter's you know, declaration here and proclamation and instructions in his letter, 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 7 through 8. He says, cast all of your anxiety on him. Why? Because he cares for you. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. I find it interesting that Peter draws a direct correlation between anxiety and the attacks from the enemy. So what that passage is telling us is that heightened levels of anxiety make us more vulnerable to attacks from the enemy. So, so here's the thing. It's really powerful when we recognize that we are not walking through seasons alone. It's really powerful when we recognize that God gave us one another to walk through these seasons together. So what I want to spend today's message talking about is the idea of fellowship, the idea of being together. Again, social distancing the, together, the idea of biblical community. But I want to speak to it 
through the avenue of anxiety. Because see, in these times where some of us are experiencing heightened levels of anxiety, our, our routines, our rhythms have been thrown off, it's this idea of being together and being with one another and experiencing biblical community actually is one of the ways that we're going to get through this, and it's one of the ways that God is going to draw us closer to him. So let me give you some things that I want you to jot down, again, if you're taking notes, that kind of help us deal with that, as well as lead us into fellowship with one another. First, whenever we have feelings of anxiety, we need to be honest with God about what I'm feeling. You gotta be honest. Got feelings, got anxiety, be honest. I mentioned this earlier. If you're experiencing heightened levels of anxiety and worry, let me let you in on a little something I hope frees you up. God already knows that. God already knows. So when you take your thoughts and your feelings and your anxiety, and sometimes it might even feel like you're just kind of like emotionally just dumping things all over the place and just crying out to God and just like, I don't know what to think. What I would tell you is that that's actually one of the things that God desires from you. I'm so grateful that over and over in God's word, we see examples of people who were incredibly distraught and they went to God with that, and God welcomed that. I mentioned the book of Psalms several times in this teaching series. I mean, over and over in the book of Psalms, David, who the Bible calls a man after God's own heart, he goes to God, and he says some things that, honestly, I'm kind of like, I don't know if you're supposed to say that, David. And yet, he says it, and God allows it to be in his word, the Bible, because God wants us to see something not about David, but about himself, that he is big enough for us to take those levels of thought and honesty and raw emotion to him. Let me just give you one example. There's many from the book of Psalms, but Psalm chapter 10, verse 1. Here's what David says. Why, Lord, do you stand far off? Why do you hide yourselves in times of trouble? You ever felt like God was just distant? Worse, you ever felt like that when you needed God, it was almost like he was hiding himself in a time of trouble? And that's exactly what David says. A man after God's own heart. And yet, if you read through the rest of Psalm chapter 10, it's that level of honesty that, God, that David has with God that leads David to a place where he is reminded of the trustworthiness of God. And that's part of how God brings us back to himself is when we are honest with him about what we are feeling. Let me tell you what the New Testament says about this in the book of James. James chapter four, verse eight. Draw near to God and God will draw near to you. What I'm trying to say is that worry and anxiety that we are all feeling during this season is actually the way that God wants you to draw near to him. And when you do, he won't be caught off guard. When you do, he will not evaluate or judge or shame you for those prayers. It will actually be the way that you experience him drawing near to you. So let me encourage you, go to God with those thoughts, go to God with those worries and anxiety. Second, whenever we have feelings of anxiety, if you're taking notes, let me ask you to jot this down. We need to remember God's faithfulness. Remember God's faithfulness. One of the most common commands in the entire Bible is the word remember. God knows how forgetful we are, and so he reminds us over and over again of what he's done. And can we just like for a minute like stop and remember how many things God has actually brought us through? I mean, when we read through the Bible, we see how many times God brought his, his people, the Israelites, the Hebrew people, the Jews, through things, but like just in our own nation. I mean, a little over 200 years of history, how many times has God brought our nation through crisis? I mean, you, you cannot deny God's involvement in the history of our nation, as much as people may try to do so. God has been faithful, and God will continue to be faithful, and he will be faithful once again to bring us through this. What about in your own life? I mean, what about the times God has come through for you? I mean, I think about my life, the, the times that God has been faithful, in fact, I've got a story I want to share with you of a time where God showed his faithfulness in my own life. So uh, some of you know my family. Maybe if you're joining us for the first time, you may not know a little bit about my family, so let me share that with you. My wife, Morgan, and I, we've been married for 17 years. We have three boys. Sam is 10, Jacob is 8, and Henry is 4. And so we had been married for almost seven years when uh, Sam, our oldest, was born. And uh, getting pregnant was just not something that was easy for us. 
And so maybe you're watching today and, and you're struggling with infertility and you're trying to get pregnant and it's just not happening. And, and I know it might be hard to look at me now and I've got three boys and I've been blessed and that was a long time ago, but we walked through that season and we walked through that season of those prayers not being answered as quickly as we had desired. And so we know what that can feel like. And so I wanna encourage you to continue to trust and continue to move forward. But, but we walked through that and, and, and thankfully God was faithful and we have three boys, but it was never easy. But if you look kind of at the ages of our boys, you know, Sam and Jacob, they're only two years apart, but then there's a four-year gap uh, to Henry. And, and that was not by design. I mean, we, we didn't intend for there to be such a big gap between uh, our second and third child. The reason why there's such a large gap is because we just quite simply could not get pregnant. It just wasn't happening. And this didn't go on for months. Like, this literally went on for years where, you know, month after month, like, we just continued to pray and we felt like God had laid that desire in our heart to have a third child, but it just wasn't happening. And I remember about uh, late fall of the year 2014, and we'd been in this for, like I said, a number of years, and we just got to a place where we just decided, you know what, like, we're just going to move on. And when I say move on, it wasn't in a spirit of bitterness. We decided, I remember my wife and I, we prayed together that we wanted to move on in a spirit of gratitude. I mean, we'd gotten to know a lot of couples through this process who had not been blessed with two children. We had two children, two healthy boys. We felt incredibly blessed, and, and maybe we had misread something from the Lord, and, and he didn't desire for us to have a third child, and so we just decided we weren't going to pray about it anymore. We weren't going to ask God to give us a third child. Uh, my wife came off the medication that she had had to be on for the previous uh, two children to be born, and, and we just kind of closed that chapter. We just kind of moved forward and, and truthfully felt really blessed that we had two boys. The problem was our oldest son, Sam, who was five at the time, he continued to pray every night for God to put a baby in mommy's tummy. Now, some nights he would ask God to put nine or 10 babies in mommy's tummy. So we never knew from one night to the next how many babies Sam was gonna ask God to put in his mommy's tummy, but he was faithful every night to pray to ask God to put a baby in mommy's tummy. And this created a dilemma for me as his dad because like, I knew mommy wasn't going to get pregnant because she wasn't taking the medication anymore. We weren't praying for it anymore. We'd kind of moved on. But I didn't really think that it was good for me to tell my five-year-old son to stop praying. And I just figured, like, at some point, he'll kind of move on and, and he won't pray these prayers anymore. And, and to let you know just, like, how much I had moved on, that following January, my wife's birthday is on January 20th. Put it on your calendar. You can all send her gifts next year. You're welcome, honey. But her birthday is on January 20th. I wanted to give her a gift that kind of reminded us like of the blessings that God had given us with two children and just to kind of encourage her. She's an amazing mom and I just wanted her like to know that, that she's an amazing mom. And so I created like online like this little book and I brought the book with you here today and I know you can't see the specifics of the book so I wanna describe it to you. What I did is I chose a lot of pictures with Morgan with Sam and with Morgan with Jacob and I made this little book for her and this was the gift that I was gonna give her on her birthday. And, and down here on the bottom right hand side it literally says Sam and Jacob's mommy. There's nothing about a third child in print on this book. It simply says Sam and Jacob's mommy and this was my gift to her to let her know how much she was an amazing mom to our two boys. As only God could do, the day that I ordered this book, when I got home from work, I walked in the house, and my wife had a look on her face that I had only seen two other times. And I knew immediately what that look meant. And I just kind of shrugged my shoulders like, what? And she just said, I, I know, I, I can't believe it. And as you now know, since we have a third son, my wife was actually pregnant. Now. I tell you that story for two reasons. One, if you have a prayer request, you need to tell Sam, my 10-year-old now son, okay? Because he still prays to God daily, and apparently he has a direct line of communication to God, all right? The second reason I tell you that story is to tell you that God was faithful when I was faithless. I'd moved on. So much so that I literally ordered a book and put into print that my wife was only going to be the mother of two children, not three. See, so many times we put all of this pressure on ourselves that it's all about, well, did I pray this prayer the right way? Or, 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 or have I prayed enough today? Or did I read my Bible or enough? Or am I doing all of the things I'm supposed to do? Do I have the right emotions? Am I believing strong enough? Because if I just have enough faith, then God will do what I'm asking him to do. And what I want you to see is that God is faithful when we are faithless. 
God is faithful when you stop praying the prayers. God is faithful when you don't have the right emotion or state of mind. God is faithful when you don't spend time in his word. God's faithfulness is not dependent upon whether or not we are faithful. That's what makes him God. So when I say let's be reminded of God's faithfulness, that's what I'm saying. I have been faithless. You have been faithless. We don't stand on our ability to demonstrate faith to God. We stand on God's promise of being faithful to us in the midst of our faithlessness. I love what this passage says in the book of Psalms. It's so powerful. Psalm chapter 77, verses 11 through 14. Listen to these words. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. I will consider all your words and meditate on all your mighty deeds. Your ways, God, are holy. What God is as great as our God? You are the God who performs miracles. You display your power among the peoples. And let me challenge us, church, right now to to claim the truth of those verses, that our God is a God who performs miracles. Miracles, And I know what we're being told about how long this virus is going to last. And I know what all the experts are saying. And I pray for them daily because they are on the front lines of fighting this virus. But can we declare that our God is a God of miracles? Can we claim the truth of that verse and ask God to show up in a mighty way and to perform a miracle in our land and in our world that people would stand back and say there was something beyond human intuition and human ability that stepped in here? Can we claim the truth of that in this season? And can we stand on God's faithfulness in the midst of this season? Third, let me ask you to jot this down. Whenever we have feelings of anxiety, we need to understand why I feel this way. I've got some anxiety. Why do I feel this way? You say, well, you've been answering that question the whole message. We're in the middle of an irregular season. Our rhythms have all been thrown off. That's why we feel this way. And yes, that is true. But I want to push a little further to ask, have you considered, are there maybe some specific triggers that are triggering more levels, higher levels of anxiety or worry? And see, I believe there are. See, I think that in the middle of this season, if we're not careful, we can let a lot of other voices contribute even more anxiety. So let me challenge you to do something. Let me challenge you to keep up with the news without letting the news consume you during the season. And and, and it's really challenging. And, And here's why. This is the first global challenge in the history of the world. That's a big statement. This is the first global challenge in the history of the world that we have ever walked through together globally. What does that mean? This affects all 7 billion people. This affects world economies. This affects everything about everything. This is the first time we have ever walked through a challenge on that large of a scale where news was reported in real time all the time and through social media. So here's what that means. There's lots of different voices competing for our attention, some of which have no expertise at all. Misinformation has never been as high as it is right now. And we were not created or designed to be able to absorb all of that information emotionally and intellectually in real time all at once, being able to discern and decipher truth from light. We were not created or wired that way. And unfortunately, like our traditional news outlets that at one time just simply reported the news, they're not really in the business of doing that anymore. So here's what that means for us. We have to put up filters. We have to put boundaries in place. We're already experiencing anxiety and worry simply because the rhythms of our life have been changed. And we're taking those to prayer and prayer to God, and we're trusting God to continue to be faithful. And we know that God is sovereign, but we don't need to add to it by allowing things into our mind that are simply just going to increase our anxiety rather than our faith. And if you find yourself in a place where you say, I I do feel like there's some things that are making it even worse, and I'm not really sure what it is. I've tried to put some of these boundaries in place. Let me give you an encouraging prayer to maybe pray, again, from David, from the book of Psalms. It might help provide some guidance. Psalm 139, verses 23 through 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way of everlasting. And so last week I talked about silence and solitude, okay? This would be a really good prayer to pray along with God if you're really struggling with that. Hey, God, search my heart. Show me what's going on there. Show me what is bringing these things into my heart and and let me know if there's anything that I've done to contribute to it. And I believe God will be faithful to answer that prayer. 
Finally, number four, let me ask you to jot this down. When we're dealing with anxiety, we're dealing with worry, we gotta talk it out. Not just with anybody, talk it out with godly friends. Talk it out with godly friends. If you try to process all of this alone, that's not gonna go well. God gave us each other to walk through everyday life together and certainly to walk through unique seasons such as this together. And it's important that we have people in our lives, again, for biblical community, again, for fellowship. God's word is just full over and over of commands and examples of why this is so important. Let me give you one from the Old Testament, Ecclesiastes chapter four, verses nine and 10. Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived, here's what he said. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. We have to have one another. Some days you may be up while your friend is down. Other days your friend may be up while you are down. We pull together and we pull up one another and we experience fellowship and community with one another. So let me talk about life groups and how we're gonna do that for the rest of the semester. Because again, our life groups here at Vaughn Forest are the way that we experience doing life together. We experience a biblical fellowship and community with one another. So our life groups can't meet together right now because again, we are honoring what our leaders have asked us to do with, with social distancing. So what we are doing is we're taking advantage of something called Zoom. Now, if you've never heard of Zoom before, it's a really fun word to say. In fact, why don't you just say it out loud together as a family? Zoom, all right? Just like it sounds, it's spelled Zoom, Z-O-O-M. Some of you may use Zoom. If you've never used Zoom, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Zoom is basically like FaceTime for a bunch of people. So if you've ever FaceTimed somebody, you know, you're on your phone, you can see them, they can see you, you can talk. Zoom is like that for multiple people. And it was literally like created perfectly for a life group. And so our life groups are going to utilize Zoom. So here's how that works. Your li our life group leaders, PJ, has already um, emailed all of them this information. We as a church have paid for all of our life group leaders to set up this Zoom account so they can use. Thank you for your generosity. That's what makes us able to do things like that. So if you are in a life group, you're going to hear from your life group member, and they are going to simply email you a link. All you have to do is click on that link and it'll take you to a couple of steps. It's simple, it's really easy. That's why we chose this because it's the easiest thing out there to use. You're just like, I don't have Zoom on my computer. No problem, it'll walk you through the process and, and, and downloading this isn't gonna create any issues for you or anything like that. And your life group leader will send you a link. It'll have the day, it'll have the time that your group is going to meet together. And so that will be coming soon. Now, life group leaders, here's what I'm asking from you. To, when you email your group, to set up a time for your group to meet other than 9.30 or 11 o'clock on Sunday mornings. Now, I know some of your life groups are used to meeting during those times. I'm here at our building. But since those are the only two times during the week that we're going to have our online worship gathering, I want as many people as possible to be able to attend that. And then I think it's actually beneficial to find another time during the week, since we're all kind of like isolated, to, to connect with your group. And so that'll be kind of fun to find a time that your group can do that. And then for the rest of the semester, you can do that every single week, okay? Now, you say, well, that sounds like a lot. It, it's really not. And I can't wait to hear from some of you about how your group experiences go. Again, if you're in a life group, you're gonna be getting that from your life group leader. And I want to encourage you to participate. You're like, well, that's gonna be different. It's not gonna be the same. I don't think it's gonna be as much fun. Let me challenge you, try it. Just give it a shot, okay? Don't, don't rule it out before you've given it a shot. Is it gonna be different? Yes, but is different always bad? No. And so there might be even some things that you enjoy from that. Like I even have already heard from one of our life group leaders who said, you know, we've always tried to figure out how to incorporate our kids into the group, and so some weeks we're gonna do that. Other weeks we're gonna meet a little later because our kids are younger after we put them to bed so we can just have a conversation without the kids. I think that's great. So that type of creativity is what's gonna be uh, needed during this time and actually what's gonna produce a lot of benefit. Now listen, if you're not in a life group, okay, for whatever reason you weren't able to sign up this semester, I totally understand those things can happen. But if you're now at a place where you think, man, I would really love to be able to participate with one of those every week, you just email us, okay? Our email address that we're utilizing a lot during the season is care at vaughnforest.com. You could email that address. You could email one of us as the pastors. We will find a life group for you. We don't want anybody to go without biblical community right now. Even if you can't get in a life group, one of the things I hope happens from this daily devotion 
devotion that I'm starting to morning, tomorrow morning as we build some community with that. And so you can join in through a live stream on Facebook and you can kind of type and I can type back and we can kind of interact and, and we can kind of see how it goes from there. And then the other thing I'm gonna say is this is not the end all be all. Like literally every single week, we are praying, we are reading, we are talking with other churches. This is an ever kind of growing creative process that we have stepped fully into, that we are engaging. And if we find something better between now and next Sunday that we think helps even build better community and fellowship with one another, I'll let you know about it, okay? So we're gonna do everything we can as a church during this season to make sure that we continue to experience fellowship and community. You say, why is that? Here's the reason we're commanded to. This is not optional. This isn't something that we just kind of tack on. This is literally the essence of the church. We are commanded to meet together and to be with one another. Listen to what Hebrews says, chapter 10, verses 24 through 25. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Here's the phrase, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. Here's my promise to you as your pastor. We will not give up in the habit of being together. We may have to think of ways and be creative in ways we could have never imagined before. We'll do it, guided by the Holy Spirit, trusting God because he's sovereign, doing this, not so that Vaughn Forrest's name can be lifted high, but so that the name of Jesus can be lifted high. And I really believe, church, that this is a season that as we step into it and as we say, okay, God, you knew this was coming, you were ready, we want to walk with you through this season, I think we're going to see God, I think we're going to see God do some pretty amazing things. So let me encourage you this week, be with one another, communicate with one another, experience fellowship with one another, and let's ask God in prayer to help guide us as we seek him in doing that. And so God, that is our prayer. We don't want to walk through this season alone. God, we want to experience fellowship and community with one another. And so, Lord, go before us. Make sure everybody can download the Zoom link and make sure the technology works and help us to connect with people in ways that maybe we haven't before. And God, we just want to declare as a people that we are grateful that you're sovereign, that we are grateful for your faithfulness, that, God, we trust you, that even though we may not have seen this coming, we know you saw this coming, and we know you have good things in store through this. And on the other side of this. And so, God, one day at a time, we will continue to trust you. God, one day at a time, we will continue to proclaim the name of Jesus. And so, Lord, we thank you that we can rest in that. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, thanks for joining. Don't tune out quite just yet because there is a link in the description of uh, this service that gives you the option if you wanna click on it when I'm done here in just a moment uh, to fill out a connection card. That's one of the things we typically do in our service and you can do that and uh, mark any next steps. Also, it gives me a chance to remind you of giving. Now, last week was awesome. Like our church was so generous with this being our first kind of online experience to be generous in giving. Let me challenge you to continue to do so. And if you kind of missed that last week, if you're used to giving in our worship services, since we're not meeting physically on our campus, now is the time to move your giving online. It's super easy to do, vaughnforest.com. You can go to our website, click on the Give tab, and it'll just walk you through the steps. Again, they're really easy. You can use a debit card. You can use your, your, if you wanna use your routing number from your checking account, whatever the case may be, it'll give you the option to give a one-time gift or to set that up as a recurring gift where it would automatically come out at the dates that you choose. And it's really important for those of us who call Vaughn Forest home to continue to give during the season because I, as I said last week, we're continuing to be the church. We're continuing to support missions. We're continuing to support missionaries. But, but the bigger thing I know is every single week we're gonna continue to see more and more needs happen here locally in our community and we want to be able to say yes as a church. I'm so grateful for so many of you who are already generous that are allowing us to say yes now, and I want to ensure that we are able to say yes in the future, as I know you are as well. So again, if you haven't used the online giving platform, you can do that. And then as a reminder, you could also give through the app, or you can text to give if that's something that you would prefer to do as well. But as I said earlier, we're going to be doing this uh, it, it, at least for the next two weeks. Um, I'll be sending out reminders as we kind of make decisions, but for the next two Sundays, we will continue our online gathering at 9.30 and 11. Be looking for that email from your life group leader this week, and know that I'll be praying for you. And oh yeah, one last thing. Don't forget to join me tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock 
at our live uh, Facebook, on our Facebook page for the live stream of our first devotion. Thanks, and I'll be praying for you this week.